Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we're talking about design trends that will make a house look terrible. Maybe not actually terrible because there is an exception to every rule, but we're talking about trends that I just don't like and I don't wanna see anymore. I'm tired of the first trend is the accent wall. You know, I don't love an accent wall. I'm like a go big or go home type of person. I say, take that accent and put it everywhere. Okay, don't just give me a one wall that's blue and all of the other ones are like an off white. Give me all of them blue, paint the ceiling, paint the trim. I wanna see something really bold. I wanna see something that overwhelms a space because I think that's cool. Now, accent walls can certainly look good. Like maybe you have a color and you don't wanna to commit to it everywhere. I get that, I respect it. Maybe you're renting and you're like, okay, I don't want all of the walls to be white, but you know, this one wall I can work with. That's okay, but it's like, don't put a ton of money into that accent wall. Because if you're gonna have to change it, if you're gonna have to get rid of it, if you might get tired of it after a period of time, you don't want to spend too much because then you're gonna just be wasting money. And let me tell you what, painting is maybe cheaper than having your floors redone, but it's not inexpensive. Okay, having something professionally done, you're gonna spend a little bit of money and you're gonna spend a little bit more if you want a really good job done, unless you're gonna you know, DIY it yourself, which it's, it's if you're not a great painter, it just won't look good. So I don't necessarily recommend you do that. Also with an accent wall, like I said, they're expensive. So if you're doing something like, oh, I wanna have a wood accent wall. Well, you have to buy the wood, you have to cut the wood, you have to nail it in, you're gonna have nail holes, you have to fill all of this and that. It's a big commitment. Have a look at this space here. It has a wallpaper accent on this one wall. And I think the wallpaper is great. It's a little bit more graphic and high pattern than I think you want in a large space. So this wallpaper would look great in a powder room or you could even line a children's closet with this and that could be a really fun statement to have that way. But in this bedroom, it's a little bit busy and and I personally would have taken the money from the wallpaper because this is not cheap, it's not inexpensive to buy the paper or have it installed, and I would have upgraded the carpet. Maybe you keep carpet in there, you do something really elevated, maybe you do a solid surface. I think that would have been a more impactful way to spend that money. Not to mention the fact that there are other great focal points or accents you can bring into a space that'll get you that same impact without having to commit to having one wall be a color, like an oversized piece of artwork, even a great rug, maybe be a piece of tapestry, that could be really cool, or just some really amazing mood lighting. All of those will still get you an elevated space that feels wonderful. So if you're considering an accent wall, consider making the entire space an accent, make it an accent room, I think that's great. Or think about how much you're spending versus the impact you're getting and where that money might be better spent. Now, like I said, I love an accent room, okay? Overwhelm the space, give me color, give me something interesting. But on the opposite end of that, one of the biggest trends ever of all time, or at this point, maybe it's not even a trend, it's just like a thing, is all white homes. I am just so tired of an all white house. And this isn't even like a, oh, everybody's just renting and so the homes are all white and they don't wanna paint. This is like, people just really want all of the spaces to be white. And I don't know if that comes from indecision. I don't know if that comes from, people are like, oh, the house is dark. Maybe it just needs to be brighter. I'm like trying to pull why everybody wants their entire house to be white out of my head and like, I can't get it. Even like kids rooms, your kids rooms don't need to be white. They can have a little bit of fun. They can have some, some elements to them, something interesting, something that kids like. like why does everything have to be all white everything? I don't like it, I'm a little over it. Now, there are some exceptions to the rule, three of them. One, maybe you just really like white or maybe you can't come to a decision on what you want the color of your home to be or whatever. Okay, I get that, totally understand it. Look for something that's white adjacent. Like this room I'm in right now, it looks white on camera and I like that it's a really bright color because it's really good for the lighting in my videos, but it's not actually white, it's an off-white. And yeah, I mean, you're like, okay, Garrett, it's an off-white, but you still get a little contrast. Like all of the trim in my home is a bright, fresh, crisp white. And then this is a warm, moody off-white. The color is actually called Asiago and it's by Bear. I think it's a beautiful color. I really like it. And it gives me a little bit of play, a little bit of interest in this room. Other spaces in my home are really fun colors. And I think that's great. The second exception to that rule would be a really difficult or expensive space to paint. 
Sometimes it just makes sense to leave them white. In my house, the entryway of my home actually has a two-story wall and it flows upstairs into the hallway, downstairs into the living room, and it's a difficult area to paint, period, and pick a color that works because downstairs is really bright, but then upstairs is a little bit darker. So what color is gonna work best in all of those? It's a difficult space. So I actually just leave it painted white and it looks great and I like that. That would be the exception, a space that is really difficult to pick a color for because maybe the lighting changes or maybe it's just really expensive to paint that space another color because it's two stories or there's just a lot of walls to paint. That would be a great exception. The third is if you're renting. Okay, I'm not painting somebody else's house. I'm not spending a ton of money to do it because I'm just gonna have to change it back when I inevitably move out of there. So why spend all of the money doing that now when you're just gonna have to paint it back later? Also, I would say that you can have a space that is white and really beautiful and still very character driven. So if you're renting and you're like, Garrett, I can't paint all of the walls, that's not happening. Have a look at this apartment right here. I love the color story that's happening. The walls are white. We've got great big windows. Maybe you don't have that, but all of the walls are white or you've got a good view anyway, whatever. That's great. But I really am loving the rug in this space. It's probably two sizes too small, but the vibrancy, the color, it just makes me so happy. It brings so much character and personality into this space. And I love the leather of this sofa with this rug because you have something that's so vibrant and colorful, but then you have something that's really rich and sumptuous and a little bit deeper. That color story is working for me, even though the walls are white. And so many of the homes I see on social media will be all white and then they'll have a little bit of beige, a little bit of like a, a tan color. It's giving loaf of bread. It's giving bowl of oatmeal. Maybe you're hungry and I think that's great. I'm hungry for some color. Give us something interesting. Bring a little bit of character into your home and you can do that just by choosing one room to paint an interesting color. Now, something that is white and tan that uh, actually is very elevated and looking good is not just the color coordination between me and my walls. Today is actually everybody's favorite baby boy, Albert. Let's bring him. Oh, look who's here to say hello. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I just woke him up from a nap, so he's a little bit sleepy, a little tired. But, like I said, we match. Look at he's tan and white. I have a tan sweater on. Oh, that's so cute. Are you just like falling asleep in my arms right now? Are you really that tired? It's noon. It's noon. All right, little pup. We're going to let you get back to your nap. You're too tired. You was up all night partying, huh? <laughs> okay, baby boy. Mm. <laughs> We're talking about a lot of color in this video, and that's because colors tend to be trends and we have a lot of fun with them and they can be easy to use, right? One of the colors that we are all so tired of ugh, is gray. Gray is the color of a rainy day. And we love a rainy day, but like I don't need my house to look like that all the time, right? Gray is like a moody color. It makes you wanna like have a little nap, be cozy. But if your whole house is gray, how are you gonna be cozy? Doesn't make any sense. Gray is such a powerful color when used correctly. It can be so beautiful. And gray has such a wide range of tones in it also that work beautifully, right? Gray, black, and white are kind of neutrals that work in most spaces. And we really don't even count them as colors. You can throw them into any room, any space, and, and they'll work, right? I think that's great. But gray, doing everything in gray, can feel very cool tone, can feel very cold. The answer to that, if you have gray in your house and you can't get rid of it, is almost to ignore ignore it. Pretend like it's not there and bring in warmer tones. You create such an interesting juxtaposition and I actually love doing that in my wardrobe. I'll wear like a gray shirt with a, a beige, a camel colored sweater or jacket or something and I think that is actually really cool because you get a lot of contrast and that can be wonderful but you really have to be careful about using gray and how overwhelming it can be and the tone of gray you're using. Be sure you're not using cool tone grays all over the place because it just makes a space feel cold. It feels like a crypt. It does not feel like a home. Even concrete 
is actually not a cool toned gray. It's very warm in tone. Gray as a color is wonderful and I love it. I'm actually thinking about painting one of my bathrooms gray, but a warm toned gray called shark skin. I think that's really beautiful because it has depth to it. It has a moodiness to it. In certain lights, it'll actually look kind of a little bit brown or a little taupe. In other lights, it looks gray, but it has a warmth to it. Those are the grays you want to look for and be after. And you can paint an entire space gray and it can actually look very warm and very inviting and, and rich. But if you paint a space a cool toned gray, it, it just feels cool toned. It just feels cool toned. But you can use that cool toned gray to your advantage and layer it with an oatmeal or a camel color that will bring that warmth in. Gray, like I said, is such a powerful, powerful color and it's one I really love, but it should be used sparingly. And you want to look for materials that naturally would be gray or things that don't look fake. Ugh, enough with colors. We need to talk about another trend that I see all over the place that is so popular. Maybe, is it a trend? Yes and no. It, it you know, it's, it, okay. We're talking about open shelves and open shelves come and go. People love to have like a floating shelf or an open bookcase. And this can be really good for displaying things if you have things to display. And I think that's wonderful. But on the other hand, open shelves, they require maintenance, they take cleaning, but also because you see everything, your space is immediately a little bit more busy. And is that always what we want? Not necessarily. So you have to be very careful when it comes to open shelves and the amount of negative space you have on them. That negative space one is going to mean you have less things on the shelf that need to be cleaned and dusted because I don't care what it is. It's going to have to happen, especially if you have like, you know, a really cool modern installation of glass shelves, like you're going to see all of the dust, every speck that gets on the glass. Open shelves make things look busy when you have a door, even a glass fronted cabinet. You kind of have to think about how things are displayed and look on them. And that's why you see people that are doing like color coordinated books because they're, they're really trying to think like, okay, I have this, it's so busy. What am I doing here? How do I elevate that? How do I make it work? If you have a moody or darker space, a busy shelf can look good because you know, it's a little darker. The shadows kind of hide things and makes, it makes the colors look a little darker. That works, but then in a really bright space, well, you, it looks busy. It's, it's a lot of stuff happening and you don't necessarily want that. You really have to think about is cleaning, is the maintenance of taking care of all of that, is the busyness it adds to the space worth seeing everything all at once? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. You have to give that consideration if you're considering adding open shelving to anywhere in your home. We have to talk about something that is plaguing the world of interior design and that is modernizing. I love modern design. I love modern features. I love modern elements. I love a modern piece of furniture. You all know this about me, but what I don't like is when we feel the need to modernize an entire house. If your house is one thing, you can update it. You can make it feel fresh. You can make it feel current or modern without having to strip out everything that is traditional or classic or gives it character. Have a look at this house right here. It, it looks okay, it looks good, right? Like the color schemes are working, but this is because everything has been modernized. We have a modern kitchen here. Clearly the wall has been opened because we have an original Craftsman fireplace, but all of it's been painted gray. Right, the entire fireplace is gray. For me, I would have maybe done the fireplace surrounding gray and this piece of wall above the fireplace and kept all of the original wood here because I think that would have had so much character. It would have been so much warmer than this space is now and it still would have been in keeping with what the house is, but would have felt updated. You could have really brought in some cool modern furniture that would have accented that beautifully. You have to be careful when you're modernizing because sometimes you choose what's the most modern thing, what's the most in or current now thing, and it doesn't have to be that. When you look at what you already have in the space, you can choose something that is a more current material, let's say, but still is in keeping with the original character of that 
the house. You can easily update things without having to completely modernize or change everything out. And I think that's the way to go about keeping history and heritage, craftsmanship, quality, and character in a house while still having it feel like you're living in today, the now, 2023. You don't have to gut and take everything out. You can easily update things by looking at what's already there and choosing a material that will refresh things and maybe increase a little bit of the quality in the space. Now that we talked about some of the trends that can easily make your home look terrible or we're just a little bit tired of whatever let's talk about one of the most popular rooms in your home your living room and how to decorate it be sure you check out this video right over here to learn all about the basics the complete guide to decorating your living room and i will see you over there